What's the best patent search engine? And when should you be using other search engines to get even better results? That's what this video is about. I'm John Edel, and this is Patent Hope. Patent Hope is about actions for innovative businesses. The first thing you need to know about a good patent search engine is what does it cover? The USPTO patent database is a relatively strong database, but it only goes back to 1976. And all of the patents that are earlier than that, you can only search by patent number. So it's limited in that it only covers granted US patents and it only covers them for a limited period of time. The next search engine that I'm going to cover is ESPASNET or eSpaceNet, depending on the pronunciation. Um, they, it is a product of the European Patent Office and um, they pronounce it ESPASNET, so that's the pronunciation that I'm going to use. That search engine is one of the better search engines that is available right now. And um, as they describe it, it currently covers about 120 million patent documents. That includes actual granted patents in a number of countries, as well as uh, what are called pre-grant publications. So they're patent documents for applications that haven't granted as patents. Um, Google Patents is the other search engine that I'm going to evaluate here and it also covers about 120 million patent documents. And those numbers tend to grow both for ESPASNET and for Google Patents. Something that you probably would not expect from ESPASNET and Google Patents is that they cover US patents and are able to search US patents from 1975 and earlier. Um, it's a little bit crazy that the European Patent Office search facility can access old US patents and you go to USPTO.gov and our own government isn't granting similar access to the old patents. So that's a little bit of a bad mark against the USPTO right there. The next thing to consider is how you actually search the patent documents. The USPTO breaks down the searches into two different searches. The first search is for US granted patents and the second search is for US pre-grant publications. They don't have a method that you can search both of those documents. The ESPASNET search service incorporates both the US patents and the US pre-grant publications into the same um, system and that is also mixed with all of the other patent documents around the world so it's a lot more convenient. Google Patents handles things similar to ESPASNET so for your ability to handle the different types of documents Google Patents and ESPASNET are generally superior in that category. When it comes to patent coverage ESPASNET and Google Patents are clear winners over USPTO.gov because they just grant more access and they're more versatile in the way that you access documents. The next category that I'm going to talk about is a simple search user interface. And this is for somebody who is uh, very often a new user or somebody who is a professional type user who wants to get something done very quickly and they want to, don't want to go into the details of a search. Um, when you look on the USPTO patent search page, you have six entry fields and you don't have to use all six of them but it's not a very clean user interface and you have to have a little bit of understanding of what you're actually doing before you can accomplish something on that page. ESPASNET is very easy it has a clean search box and um, you can just type something in and you will get reasonable results based on the things that you type in. Google Patents also has that same simplicity. So um, for the category of simple user interface, ESPASNET and Google Patents are clear winners again in that category. When you conduct a simple patent search 
the really important thing is that you need to get good results out of that patent search. When you go into USPTO.gov, you do a simple search like internet capable refrigerator. That individual search brings up one document. That doesn't make a lot of sense if you think about the number of patents that could be uh, dedicated to internet capable refrigerators. Um, it does make a little bit more sense when you understand how Google or how the USPTO is handling the search and that they're doing a Boolean search where they're only looking for that string of text as a almost exact match. Um, if you go into Espasnet and you type in internet capable refrigerator, you get a great number of results from a lot of jurisdictions around the world. The same thing happens if you go into Google patents, you're getting a great number of results and it's something meaningful because those two search engines are doing more than looking for that exact string of text. They're actually running an algorithm to try and find the documents that they think you're interested in as opposed to just looking for an exact match. For simple search performance, Espasnet and Google Patents take the cake. The next criteria is actually being able to find the thing that you're looking for once you get the search results in front of you. And having a useful search results view is what makes that possible. At the USPTO, you do a patent search and what it does is it gives you a string of patent numbers and the associated titles. That is somewhat useful information, but it could be better. Espasnet gives you a series of summaries, including titles, some document information, and a little snippet. And um, that's, it's sort of limited to that as you start, but once you start clicking on individual results, the multiple panels expand out and give additional information for each patent. So as you go down and you click more, you get more information particular to the patents that you're looking at and the one that you clicked on most particularly. Um, Google Patents probably has the best summary um, as far as what you get by looking at a single page when you get search results. You're going to get document information. You'll also get a little thumbnail of an individual patent image and it's laid out really well. It takes up a nice portion of the screen. So you're using most of your screen and you're reviewing those results. And the screen is basically filled with information that is summary for the patents that you're looking for. I find that to be the most useful out of the three. And for this one, I would give it to Google patents. The next category is speed of results. And this one is a little bit close. I find that USPTO.gov is a little bit slower than Espasnet and a little bit slower than Google Patents. It's hard to tell the difference between Espasnet and Google Patents. Um, probably all in all, I would say that this is a tie or close to a tie, but um, the thing that is disappointing about USPTO.gov when you do the patent search is that you would expect USPTO.gov to be lightning fast. It really isn't doing much. It's just looking for exact terms and doing a Boolean search. So it's just slicing the set of documents and then giving them to you in the simplest possible way with patent numbers and patent titles. So um, if any of them should be the fastest, it's USPTO and if anything, it's slower than the others. Um, the differences are probably minor, but it's just a little bit disappointing um, from the perspective of if you're giving us something that's really simple, you should be able to do it at least fast. So um, a slight edge in this category to Google Patents and Espasnet. Another important category is actually how useful are the document summaries. So you're clicking through a bunch of results 
And um, when you find something that's interesting, you'll click on an individual document. All of these search engines will take you to an individual document page. And the question is, how useful are those document pages for finding the thing that you're looking for? Um, on USPTO.gov, it is an extremely simple document page. It probably, uh, the best description of it is 1990s HTML. Um, that seems like a knock on uh, the USPTO document. However, um, I found myself several times going back and using that just text format because it is dense and it's just text. So um, even though I don't primarily use that as a document review tool, um, every once in a while I like to go back to it and use it because it's just a dense HTML page that has all of the terms smashed together in the smallest possible uh, area. Espasnet is, really it's a blend of the search review and the document re review um, because you, Espasnet keeps the uh, results page on the left hand side and as you go through you use the right and the middle panel to review the individual documents. I don't think it's the best use of space, but um, they have a lot of tools for document review that are better than what you can get at Google Patents uh, slash USPTO.gov. Um, Google Patents is probably the best all around page. It summarizes the information uh, near the top. The most important information is available generally on the same screen without a lot of scrolling or clicking. So I think that one is the most useful for reviewing individual documents. The next category is the responsiveness of the web page. Um, responsiveness is basically the ability to change the size of the screen and have everything reformatted and uh, put in new places so that it's really easy to review the web page. The USPTO page does not appear to be genuinely responsive in any sense. Um, Espasnet is responsive and um, if you view it on a phone, you're gonna get a special version of the web page that is tailored to a phone but when you start uh, resizing screens on a computer, it'll work relatively well, but it's got some limitations. Um, as you might expect with Google, um, Google has really mastered the responsiveness of the web page. Um, you would be hard pressed to find any um, sizing of the window or any device where you're not going to have a reasonably well formatted version of whatever it is you're looking at. So um, when it comes to responsiveness, Google's going to be the winner there. The next thing to consider is Boolean searching. And Boolean is really the most powerful version of patent searching and what most professional patent searchers rely on. If you're new to patent searching, um, once you start using the tools of Boolean searching, that's when it's going to really elevate your game as far as your ability to find quality results. You can still get good results without using Boolean searching, but you're more likely to find quality results if you are Boolean searching. Um, the two things that uh, you want to understand about Boolean searching when it comes to picking a search engine is how powerful is the search engine for Boolean searching. And the other thing is, how easy is it to use? When it comes to power, um, USPTO.gov has a very powerful, it's a strict Boolean search. So um, if you put in limitations that are really narrow, it's gonna give you a very narrow um, slice of the patent documents. Same thing with Espasnet, very powerful searching. Um, Espasnet has some really amazing search tools and a lot of options that you can search with. Um, I would say Espasnet, as far as raw power and your ability to manipulate things, 
probably is the best of the bunch. Um, Google Patents is, uh, it does do Boolean searching, but it is um, what I'd call modified Boolean searching. Um, I, what I said about the USPTO, the opposite is kind of true when it comes to Google. If you uh, slice things really thinly and give some very narrow limitations in what you're looking for, Google patents will do a little bit of interpreting and run a little algorithm on the side and say, they'll give you the narrow slice that you asked for, but then it's gonna throw in on top of that a lot of other things that are we think you probably would like to look at this also. So um, some people, when they're looking for a narrow slice, really like to look for a narrow slice. In that case, uh, Google Patents probably isn't the best for Boolean searching. So out of a raw power perspective, Espacenet is going to be the better or the most powerful option. When it comes to ease of use, um, there's a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to Boolean searching, no matter what you do. So the question is, which of these are going to be the best option and as far as ease of use? And um, the patent office, it's probably the most traditional Boolean search, so that, that would be the baseline, um, it, rather than to say it's easy or hard. Um, Espacenet is, possibly a little bit more difficult to operate than the patent office, but um, in exchange for that difficulty, you're getting a little bit more power. Um, when it comes to ease of use, uh, Google Patents has what's called a synonym box system. And without explaining it uh, in this video, I'll try to do another video later that uh, explains how that system works but it's probably the most user-friendly because you're just typing in synonyms and then in new boxes, you're trying to uh, cross-reference the other things that you're interested in in your search. So um, I would regard that as the most user-friendly. All of these you have to learn a little bit before you can use them, but um, because it's so user-friendly, even when professionals are searching, I, I find it to be the quickest of all of the possibilities. It's also very compact in that it doesn't take up a lot of the screen to um, run these searches and type in the things that you want. So uh, I'd give the nod on simplicity to Google Patents. Overall, when it comes to Boolean searching, I think your best bet is to choose between Espacenet and Google Patents. Um, Espacenet when you're really looking for the power, Google Patents when you're looking for simplicity. Um, I don't really think that one is better than the other. They're just different. The next category is classification searches. And patent offices group patents into categories so that um, a patent relating to how cars work is not going to be in the same category as a patent about how a computer runs. And they do that so that they can get their examiners focused on the right material. Um, the great thing about that is, is that they are organizing everything into useful categories and useful subcategories and sub sub subcategories that you can use to find information. And when you find a patent that's really close to what you're looking for, you can grab onto that information and find all of its cousins in the same place. Um, the USPTO is, allows you to search along these classifications, but it doesn't really offer much in the way of helpful tools in how you would use the classification. Um, Espacenet has um, really a tremendous classification system. They share that classification system with the USPTO, but as far as what a user has access by going to espacenet.com, um, the, there's just a great wealth of information about the classification system on their website, readily accessible, um, from the general user interface. You can just click on classifications and find useful information. Um, Google Patents has some very interesting tools about how they 
um, to teach you about classifications and help you understand what you're searching. And you can take that information and use it on the fly as you search. But it, I don't believe it's as powerful as what you can do with Espasnet. So when it comes to classification searching, um, this is one category where I say that there is a really distinct winner in that Espasnet is just the best tool. If you're gonna leave Google Patents for a particular reason, classification search is probably really high on your list. The next thing is usefulness of image searching. Um, at the USPTO, when you do a search, you don't get any images associated with it. You just get the patent numbers and the titles. When you go into an individual result, you still don't get the images. You get the text of the patent. Um, then after you are in the text of the patent, you can click on a button that says images and it takes you to the USPTO's image viewer. It is not a very good viewer. It has some compatibility issues, which you can work out, but um, this is about what's the best and working out the problems is probably not what you want to be doing when you're searching for patents. Um, when it comes to Google patents, um, Google patents really has a great format for dealing with images as you search. Um, what you can do is um, the, they're going to give you thumbnail images of some of the patent drawings as you go by default. So you have that going for you automatically. The next thing that you can do is click on one of those thumbnails and not just for the patent that you're clicking on, but for all of the patents that have images, Google patents is going to expand out all those thumbnails. And then if you hover over any of the thumbnails of the individual images in a patent, it's going to blow that up for you so you can review that individual image. It's really a clever way of doing a patent search using images and a really effective way to make it quick and a fairly thorough search that you can do on the fly without digging and digging and digging. Um, Espasnet also enables thumbnails and you can go in the settings and expand on the amount of information that you can get with the thumbnails. You can get more thumbnails, but it's not as genuinely useful as the Google patent search. The final category and probably one of the most important things in patent searching is how well an individual website or search engine sorts its search results. This is really important because if you have 2000 search results, most of the time you're not going to search all the way to the very last result. So if the search result that you're most interested in makes it into the top 15 results, you're probably going to be successful. If it's in the bottom 15 results, you're probably not going to be successful. So, it's just a really important aspect of getting the job done reasonably and getting it done quickly. USPTO.gov does not do this at all. Um, you get chronological search results, so you just get what you get. If it's the most important result is at the end, you just need to search to the end. Espasnet is, uh, has a really strong searching algorithm. Um, so does Google Patents. And um, for me, I have a hard time telling one is better than the other. And the important thing about one not really being better than the other, or at least as far as I'm able to tell, isn't that you should go and weigh all of the other factors and see which one is your favorite search engine and then just use that. Um, it's not a tiebreaker that doesn't get used. The way I look at it is that if you have a really powerful search ranking algorithm in one and a really powerful search ranking algorithm in the other, whichever one you've chosen as your primary search engine, when you get stuck 
and the ranking algorithm doesn't seem to be helping you, that's when you want to go and try out the exact same search in the different search engine. So use it as a powerful backup tool. Use it as a second opinion that will enhance your search. And when you're stuck, use it to get unstuck. And if it doesn't help you get unstuck, maybe the thing you're looking for isn't there, but you've had two different powerful looks at it. So who's the winner? I would give it to Google Patents. Google Patents is strong in almost every single area that I've evaluated. Um, the only place where it is, I believe, clearly outclassed is in classification searching. And um, it's not that Google Patents is bad at classification searching, it's that Espacenet is just superior in that individual category. But as an all around, pretty darn good and often best um, across the board. Um, Google Patents just checks every box. Um, Espacenet is, I would say, a close second, really strong competitor. And as far as USPTO.gov, um, the search that they give to the public is just not that good. People use it as the go-to because they want to apply for a US patent but when it comes to finding the prior art that you're trying to look for, it's just not nearly as useful a tool as the other two. Because Patent Hope is about actions for innovators, I want to give you three things that you can walk away from this video and use as actions that you can take. One is start searching on Google Patents. If you just type something in the generic search bar, you're going to start with some pretty reasonable results and it will help you along your way. When you're ready to jump into a little bit more uh, complex searching, I want you to get into uh, the Google synonym boxes and try to use those. Um, I think once you start using those effectively, you'll be a much better searcher. When you're ready to do classification searching, the action is go to espacenet.com. It's just the best in that category and you want to take advantage of the best tools when you're doing a particular type of search that is well suited to that type of searching. So espacenet classification searching, just when you're doing that, go there. The next thing that I want you to think about is when you're stuck, when you think maybe a second set of eyes, so to speak, would be helpful to you. Jump between Google Patents and Espacenet. Um, if one's not giving you the results that you want sorted appropriately, then the other may do it. So use it as a crutch. Go find what the other one says. It can only help you. If you're interested in more actions for innovative businesses, consider subscribing to this channel.